Okay, so this is the little radio I've got. I'm gonna plug it in and we'll listen to it. This little jack or this little switch is grounded. So as long as I hold that and hold the case, I'm good. So I can flip through. Everything we could, we wore hats backwards and upside down and all the We need one a week. We haven't got one yet. I mean, there's not much to see here, but you can kind of hear. Part of business strategy. Make sure you go and grab that as well. Sometimes. Subscribers, you got 260. A couple of days on this. So, so I want to examine a young kid from Iran. Sometimes you can hear an oscillation. It's not under every station or every circumstance, but usually under the stronger stations with more RF energy, you hear oscillations. And that's due to components from the input to output feeding back and adding some of the output back to the input. And it's actually not really desirable in this particular type of design, uh, but it does increase the RF energy. Uh, and it basically increases distortion at the output. It makes it sound weird. It's not doesn't have as many benefits as the regenerative radio because the regenerative radio you can control if it oscillates or not or how much. I'll show you how all this works. So, there's really not much to it. I'll show the schematic here in one of the parts of the video. But it's basically two RF transistors. Two coils are wound on a uh, ferrite bar there. And as you can see, it's a pretty pretty simple circuit. You know, designed the same way you would design a low frequency circuit. And that's kind of why you get uh, feedback. Because you are not supposed to... All these flying leads from this coil here are... Are going right over top of the output stage going to the output and so you're getting oscillations so actually a bit of lead dress would go a long ways actually i haven't opened this thing up in years uh, but actually the main advantage of this thing you might think it's just kind of a brick because why would you need a radio that's just you know slightly smaller and slightly shittier than we have on your desk already but this thing runs off a single double a battery and it only draws 125 microamps of current. I have never had to change this battery since I've made this years ago. And it's not even anywhere close to flat. It's still at 1.5 volts. It's just your standard variable capacitor. These are actually kind of hard to get anymore. I had to get this from a special website. They don't really make these. They make smaller ones. They make diodes that are like capacitors, but as far as straight capacitors, not really. Same with this ferrite bar. These are a little bit hard to get a hold of now. Uh, and yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's pretty standard components. I'll show you the schematic. So here's the schematic. It's, it's out of this book here. It looks cheesy, but it's actually like one of the best books I've ever seen on learning how to make transistor radios. So as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty simple design. It's actually, like I would say, one step above like a crystal radio where it's just, you know, no amplification. This one has two transistors, two RF transistors. Those are not just jelly bean transistors. Those are supposed to perform better at one megahertz than, you know, a two and 3904 or something. And it's literally just two stages of amplification and it gets rectified, demodulated actually, not just rectified, demodulated and sent to the audio output, which is actually really low. I had to amplify that sound quite a bit for it to be heard. Um, as you can see on, on the left, you have your standard LC tank circuit. That's adjustable. And then you have basically two coils there, and that's to help couple the impedance, the somewhat high impedance actually of the RF signal to a lower one so it can be properly amplified by the transistor more efficiently. And that, that could be a transformer, 
but it's it's actually it's behaving most like an auto transformer. It's you see you see this a lot in regenerative radios or just old style radios where the coil is tapped somewhere, but in this case it's just two separate coils, which is basically the same thing. Those diodes and that resistor, that's basically there for biasing, biasing the second stage. Well, actually both stages of transistor. And then you have it isolated with that 100K, so it's not feeding back too much. The feedback you hear is not intentional. It's actually improper lead dress. As you can see, it was a rat's nest in there. I didn't think it would matter too much, but even at one megahertz, you do really have to be careful with your wiring because otherwise you get the output feeding back to the input and you get some regeneration, but it's uncontrolled and it causes distortion and it basically causes more problems than good because it's uncontrolled. And yeah, but that's that's basically what they call it a TRF radio, a tuned radio frequency. It's the most basic radio you can ever make. Uh, it's the first rate, first amplified radio they ever made back in the day, except it used vacuum tubes and not just two. They used like six because the gain was so low. But um, yeah, the, like I said, the main advantage is the current draw. It draws like almost no current. You could probably run this thing on a, a tiny solar cell or like like a like a potato or something if you really wanted to a couple of potatoes. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. Uh, simplest amplified radio, I would say.